This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Ryfield's Challenger 2, Edward's Weekend Edition Spitfire Mark 8, Italeri's Porsche 935 Baby, cool cutting mats from Tankcraft, and Tamiya's KV1. New product rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to Fine Scale Modeler's New Product Rundown, the video series that takes you inside the latest kits. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Tim Kidwell, editor of Scale Auto Magazine, standing in for Elizabeth Nash, who is somewhere else. And our first kit today is Ryfield's 135th Scale Challenger 2, the British Army's main battle tank. This kit includes the theater entry standard with modified armor and weapons upgrades. This is Ryfield's first Challenger 2. Let's take a look at what's inside. The lower hull builds from a belly plate with part of the nose, sides with suspension attachments and sponsons, belly armor, and rear plate. The suspension includes road wheel arms with torsion bars that lock into a central bar inside and leave the suspension movable. In addition to two-part return rollers, the running gear has road wheels, idlers, and drive sprockets that trap poly caps to be movable. The individual link tracks comprise upper and lower block halves that trap rods and should be workable. A jig aids track assembly. Arms help support the fender skirts, which are fitted with multiple part explosive reactive armor blocks. The upper hull features nicely molded detail with engine grills, hatches and hinges, and front fenders. A ton of small details like filler caps, lights, driver's vision block, toolboxes, hinges, and bar armor finish the hull. The turret lower and upper halves are joined by separate sides and rear plates. In addition to the multi-part main gun, which is molded in halves, except for the muzzle and recoil cover, turret detail includes the remote weapon station that builds from a lot of parts that is nearly a kit in itself. Separate loader and commander's hatches, mantlet and integrated optics, smoke dischargers, antenna array, ERA, and bar armor. Not only is vinyl used for polycaps, but it also provides part of the mantlet cover and the ammunition feed for the remote weapon station. Vision blocks, light lenses, and sighting optics are supplied in clear plastic. A fret of photo etched brass gives equipment racks, engine screens, fender details, a cable cutter, and more. The kit's tiny decal sheet and marking diagrams have markings for a single vehicle, the much photographed Megatron. The basic kit detail is sharp, but if you want to take it up a notch, check out Ryfield's PE upgrade set. It includes the full bar armor for the hull and turret more replacements for racks, vents, and antennas. In the box, this is a detailed and impressive kit. Our next kit is the latest Spitfire from Edward, the Weekend Edition Mark 8. Now, I've made no secret of my fondness for building anything Australian, so this one's right up my alley. Yes, now, this is not a new tool. Edward has released other Mark 8s in the past, including another Weekend Edition separate from this one. Being a weekend edition kit, this one eschews the photo etch metal seen in the Profi Pack kits, but gives you all of Edward's nice plastic. Major airframe parts such as the fuselage halves and wings divided into upper halves and full span lower piece are marked with recessed panel lines and petite rivets. Horizontal stabilizers, wing tips, and separate elevators, rudder, and ailerons finish the exterior. Even without the usual Edward photo etch details, the cockpit looks good with sides, frames, seat sides and body, and controls. Optional instrument panels are provided, one with molded bezels, the other flat to be detailed with decal instruments. No engine is provided, but the kit has detailed exhausts and separate upper and lower nose panels. The underwing radiators have three-part housings and posable exit flaps. The landing gear includes detailed legs that terminate with separate hubs and tires. The big four-blade prop is sandwiched into the two-part spinner. The windscreen is separate and there are optional parts to pose the canopy open or closed. Other clear parts include lights and the gun sight. In addition to a separate sheet of stencils, the kit's decals provide two marking options for Royal Australian Air Force fighters, one flown by Australia's leading ace of World War II, Clive Caldwell, the other flown by Norm Turnbull. This is another fine addition to Edward's long line of Spitfires. So next, let's take a look at Italeri's 124th scale Porsche 935 Baby. This version of Porsche's long-standing 935 race car earned its moniker for being powered by a smaller 1.4 liter engine. 
So our research indicates that this tooling dates to 1978 when it was released by Nitto. That said, it's a relatively simple kit with really nice detail. The one-piece body is pretty clean with open fender vents and just a little flash and mold seams to clean up. The streamlined underside is a single part. The simplified engine with transmission and rear axles underneath, as well as the front suspension and ratcheted steering hint that the model may have been motorized at one point. There's more engine detail above under the removable cover, including a block, belts, and top-mounted fan. The race car's interior features center console, shifters and pedals, roll bar, rear deck, sides, bucket seat with molded harness, dashboard with molded instruments, and steering wheel. The wheels include the spoked hubs, separate aerodynamic caps, and soft vinyl slicks. The windows are molded together as a single insert. The clear tree also features head, fog, and taillight lenses. A beautifully printed decal sheet provides markings for a Martini-sponsored car from the Brad Hatch six-hour race in 1977. Optional numbers and other sponsors allow for three other cars to be modeled. So this looks like a relatively easy build aided by great decals. So many of us like to have a cutting mat on our workbench, not only to protect the surface, but to cushion cuts. So these new cutting mats from Tankcraft, they caught our attention as a way to lift the humble cutting surface above the norm. At present, they have two designs, one in Panzer Gray with a four-view drawing of a Panther on it, the other in Olive Drab with a four-view of a Sherman. Both also feature a grid to measure cuts if you wish. In addition to the 12 by 18 inch mats, these designs are also available in 18 by 24 inches. These laminated PVC mats are three millimeters thick and self-healing. They can be ordered directly from Tankcraft and are a great way to up armor your bench. So next we have a kit that I know a lot of you have been anxious to get a look at. It's Finally, I've been able to wrest the FSM airwaves away from Aaron and the interloper, Tim. Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth Nash coming to you from my airtight bunker. So for our final kit today, we have Tamiya's 135th scale KV-1. Now, Tamiya has had a 135th scale KV in its catalog since early 1970, but this is an all new tool of the Soviet heavy tank. The hull builds from a belly, sides, glasses, top, and curved rear plate with separate curved intake cover. The intake screen is molded solid, as are the engine deck screens. Separate armor panels bolster the lower nose and driver's plate. The large and small engine hatches, as well as the driver's hatch, are separate. Optional parts allow the driver and small engine deck hatches to be posed open, although there's no interior detail. This kit represents an early production KV-1, so the road wheels are an early style with lightning holes. Drive sprockets, idlers, return rollers, and massive road wheel arms finish the suspension. Nicely molded Lincoln length tracks, including upper run sag, finish the running gear. The instruction center spread gives detailed instructions for fitting the tracks. The separate fenders are pretty thin, as are the fender brackets. Multi-part toolboxes with posable lids, shot deflectors, and a turret race finish the hull. The welded turret builds from top, sides, rear, underside, and rounded section for the lower part. These parts, along with the turret front and mantlet, feature rolled steel texture. The main gun is a single piece with a hollow muzzle. The commander's hatch is posed open, and a well-molded figure is included to man it. A small decal sheet and color diagrams give markings for two Soviet tanks in overall green. This is a great looking model that I expect will go together quickly and easily. Look for reviews of it and the Challenger 2 in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine, and you can see more new products in the July issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Elizabeth Nash, and on behalf of Aaron Skinner and Tim Kidwell, thanks for watching and stay safe. I now return you to a previously scheduled program in progress.